stamp the foot on the red light. I love that Eddie Murphy. Now, I mentioned we're having babes in exercise clothes next on Joe Bob's Summer School. That's because it's Bodybuilding 304, very serious topic. And workout pro Karen Voigt is going to be putting the girls through some very flattering moves while we watch Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. Joe Bob Summer School, and tonight we have an upper division course, Bodybuilding 304, Applied Anatomy and Biomechanics, and uh, which translates to a good excuse to ogle women in spandex, right? Our special guest lecturer, fitness expert, Karen Voigt, will be whipping our hineys into shape while we watch Conan the Barbarian, the movie that started it all for Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the even greater sequel, Conan the Destroyer. Now. We take the science of bodybuilding very seriously here at Joe Bob's Summer School. We've broken it down by specific muscle area. And our first topic is the abdominals. The goal is this. Three months ago, both of these women here had abs that looked like balloon animals. Woo! And look at them today. What's the difference, girls? We, we use... The ab roller. That's right, the ab roller. Get down and demonstrate the ab roller while I, I explain my experience with the ab roller. Wanda Bodine was with me, actually, the night I bought my ab roller. We were watching Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, and that bimbo in the pink swimsuit came on doing her ab roller sit-ups. And I said to Wanda, you know, this commercial's been on for 97 years. There must be something to it. And Wanda was skeptical. She said, that thing looks like one of those bicycle racks you have to wear on your head when you get paralyzed. Not that you couldn't use a little ab rolling, Joe Bob. And so that was it. I took the challenge. I called the 800 number in North Logan, Utah, and I told them I want an ab roller. Now, one thing you should know if you're thinking about getting an ab roller yourself is that it comes in a giant box that has ab roller written all over it and advertising like, develop rock hard abs and as seen on TV and a big picture of the ab roller so that everybody in your neighborhood is going to know you ordered it even before you get it. Like Scrim Wilkes, he saw the mailman carrying it around and he called me up and said, Joe Bob, your ab roller is here. And then he couldn't stop laughing. He kept saying ab roller over and over again in a way that sounded like you hopeless, ignorant, beer belly doofus. You know, it's humiliating. So I said, I said to Wanda, that's okay. Because even if it doesn't work out, we'll just use it for a bicycle rack. So anyhow, I started getting real excited about changing my life with exercise when I read the instruction booklet for the ab roller. And it started off with about 17 safety warnings, including please keep children and pets away from the ab roller <laughs> during use, as well as when the machine is unattended. And uh, by, by the way, this is, this is the machine. That's what they call it. And finally... <laughs> We got down to the nitty-gritty here. It says, rest your elbows on the elbow pads. Well, uh, yours doesn't even have elbow pads, Cheryl, but rest them on something there so it'll make sense. And gently grip the foam pads on the sidebars located on each side of your head. And for the straight arm position, use an overhead grasp onto the overhead bar. Arms are straight, but elbows are soft. All right? Do not lock or hyperextend your elbows. Long about page five, you know, you finally get to actually do your first ab roller sit-up. And uh, I gave it everything I had, and then Wanda said, uh, how did that feel? And I said, well, I felt like I was rocking back and forth on a cheap bicycle rack. And uh, Wanda said, well, actually, you were rocking back and forth on an expensive bicycle rack. And I asked her, you know, uh, how long do you think I should do this? And she read in the book, it says, until you experience momentary slight abdominal fatigue. And I said, well, I experienced abdominal fatigue before I ever got down here. And Wanda said, well, probably time to stop then. And I said, well, good. That was an excellent two-sit-up workout. Uh, but my stomach already felt better after that workout. And Wanda said, which phase of the workout did it for you, Joe Bob? The first sit-up or the second one? And I can't stand it when Wanda Bodine gets like that. Okay, well, we're going to be working out with Karen Voigt, our guest lecturer tonight, as we watch Conan the Barbarian, Arnold Schwarzenegger's first serious dramatic role, where he goes around walloping people's heads off with his sword and being real rude to Sandal Bergman. Sandal is a fox in this baby. And this was kind of her first big break, too, even though a lot of her stuff ended up on the the cutting room floor but let's get it started i'll do the drive-in totals later roll the film and rusty let me show you how, how far along i've come on this i want you to hold my feet down and i'll show you just because i've been practicing all week on the ab roller 
So just hold them down, and here we go. One. One. Two. One. One. <laughs> Two. Two. Come on. <laughs> I got to read that book again. <laughs> Two. Uh, I did more in rehearsal. <laughs> Think you're funnier than Joe Bob? Who isn't, right? But can you prove it? Then enter the Monster Vision Caption Contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. And no, I'm not one of the heads. What do you win if you slay them with your caption? How about this incredibly collectible t-shirt? To play, go to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision and look for the Caption Contest link. And may the best man, woman, or mutant win. Everyone's eligible. Oh, except Joe Bob. We've heard enough from him, don't you think? Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free T-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Barbarian on TNT. Okay, there you have it. Conan telling us what is best in life. To cross your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of their women. <laughs> and since we've graduated to college level here at Joe Bob Summer School, I actually looked that up and I found out that that line is based on something that Genghis Khan once said. Genghis Khan said, The greatest pleasure is to vanquish your enemies and chase them before you, to rob them of their wealth and see those dear to them bathed in tears, to ride their horses and clasp to your bosom, their wives and daughters. But can you imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger saying that? Because no. <laughs> Arnold wasn't exactly fluent in 1982 when this flick was made. He was still detoxing from all the steroids he took when he was Mr. Universe. So he wasn't d detoxing, but he did say use steroids when he was Mr. Universe. That's why they only gave him about, about 10 lines to say in this movie. And speaking of people who are in good shape, we've got fitness pro Karen Voigt joining us at the next break. So let's get those drive-in totals out of the way. We have 72 dead bodies, one dead snake, one dead vulture, three breasts, two of them on Conan, ancient professional wrestling, heads roll, bludgeoning, impaling, throat, sp throat slitting, arm breaking, head ramming, camel punching, virgin sacrifice, cliff jumping, crucifixion, cremation, one orgy, gratuitous speechifying by Max von Sido. I give it uh, three and a half stars, so roll it. I'm glad I've been working out. You know, given the theme of the show, I got buns of steel now. We're gonna, and abs of steel. In fact, you hold up a big magnet, I get sucked right across the room. <laughs> Joe Bob, I saw this movie in 1984, and it had a girl in it, and she's sitting by this tree. What movie was that? People, we have got to have more information than that when you're submitting something for the Find That Flick contest. Now, normally, if you give me a plot description, I will know the title of the movie you're trying to remember. But if I can't answer it, hundreds of my fellow drive-in mutants can, because I got fans that watch 32 movies a day. They never leave their apartments. So to find out how to play and all the free junk you can win, visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision and look for the Find That Flick contest. Joe Bob, I saw this movie with a talking bear in it and Morgan Fairchild naked. See, that's a description I can work with. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Barbarian on TNT. Who was that gal Arnold just had sex with and more importantly, where does she work out? Cassandra Gaviola is that actress's name, and she has got some fine pectorals, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. It's Bodybuilding 304 here at Joe Bob's Summer School, and our guest lecturer is warmed up and ready to go. She owned two very popular gyms in L.A. during the peak of the fitness-crazed 80s, and since then, she's been making workout videos, writing books, training big-time celebrities. Karen Voigt is with us. Welcome to Joe Bob's Summer School, Karen. Nice to see you. So when you had your gyms in the 80s, were they big single scenes like in that Jamie Lee Curtis movie mm -hmm. from the 80s we all know and love, Perfect? Yes, actually a lot of my students got married. Some really? of them, actually what happened is that some of my students, they, they quit their jobs, they found out about working out, 
in my classes through their bosses and then they quit their jobs because it interfered it interfered with the classes they wanted to take so the the boss was mad at me but then i put together i went to a lot of uh, weddings because of little connections that they had really mm -hmm. love in the gym mm -hmm. and it's an l.a was, thing it was really an l.a thing i think that that's what <laughs> built the class more than any other thing yeah really mm -hmm. okay well now you're working on what three different exercise videos mm -hmm. what kind of workouts are these new ones that you're doing New ones, one is uh, yoga sculpt. I'm combining sculpting and yoga together to make a body that's fit, flexible, and kind okay. of new agey. Very Another, <laughs> another one is um, uh, body strength, using your own body's weight to, to actually get stronger. And the third one I'm doing is called ease into fitness or ease into exercise about- I like the um, title. Way, <laughs> ways to exercise and, and make it easy for yourself. Okay, and it's like probably for older people, Older right? folks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can can the one for old people also work for people who are just lazy? Uh, yeah, because you're sitting in a chair. It's better oh, than okay. nothing. <laughs> Let's start with one of those exercises, okay? Something okay. we can do without getting up. I like this already, okay? So show me an exercise we can do, like just sitting on this. Well, I use these here. little green genie balls, and one of the exercises I do is um, you hold it here and you bring your elbows out to the side, and it's a wrist and a forearm exercise. Okay. And it really, it's. It seems kind you of easy and You have a personalized, goofy. monogrammed yeah. green ball. I made this up. I made this idea up because I wanted people to... You invented to, this. Yeah, because okay. I wanted them to have a weight that was an open palm position. So you can squeeze it with your fingers okay. and then rotate. Keep your elbows stationary. Okay. And what am I doing? go as far forward as you can with your thumbs. Okay. For all back as far as you can. Oh. Okay. And you feel it in the forearm. There's another exercise no. I do. No. Well, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I'm starting now because I might, uh, you know, actually be able to do this by the time I'm 60. You know, so. I do I, exercises like this for him. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that yeah. in the bicep, right? Bicep and also right. right in through here. Okay. All right, let's get back to Conan and the Barbarian. More working out at the next break. Am I doing this right, yes. though? This you have to go it. a little bit more, you know, a little faster. Oh, like this. <laughs> Smoothly. Oh, no. oh, okay. And controlling. <laughs> we also need to talk about nutrition, right? Because right. like everybody in this movie we're watching, they eat shish kebab. Shish That's the only food in Conan movies, shish kebab. Shish kebab. <laughs> okay, you screwed up again, didn't you? It's your fifth year in junior college. Your life has no possibility of improving. Not true if you attend yet another session of Joe Bob's Summer School. Nine brain-expanding Saturday nights good for actual credit at Southern Arizona State Community College at Ajo. But you need to enroll your hiney. To register, you got to go to the Summer School website and get a syllabus. Plus, you'll be able to see who some of our guest lecturers are this summer. And you'll also get a sneak peek at a few of the final exam questions. And you can even include yourself in our summer yearbook, listing your worst subject and favorite hobbies. The internet address for Joe Bob's Summer School is tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. That doesn't mean you can skip the dang class. Of course, even academic probation is fun at Joe Bob Summer School Saturday nights on Turner National Technical Institute. Visit Joe Bob Summer School at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Barbarian on TNT. And as Sandal Bergman and Arnold the Barbarian prepare to make warrior love, we do a modest little fade out here on TNT so that the young and impressionable won't see just how outstanding Sandal's cantilevers are. Did I say that? Okay, that could have been a valuable learning tool actually here on Bodybuilding Night because I'm here with our guest lecturer, Karen Voigt, whose three new workout videos are coming out sometime soon, Yoga Sculpt, Body Strength, and exercises for old guys who can barely even lift the remote control, right? You can use that title. What do you think of that title? That's a good one. I always say it'll make the muscles sore when you have to eat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you'll eat less. You know, uh, Sandal and Arnold were both so buff in this movie, I don't know if you remember it, that they had to do their own stunts because they couldn't find decent body doubles to double for them. And in fact, Arnold had to tone down his workout because his muscles were so big, he couldn't wield the sword. And uh, just like me, because... Did you ever see this picture of me before TNT made me slim down for the show? Have you ever seen this? Uh, this is me uh, before uh, I had to get in shape for actual work on uh, this show. But, uh, I, and I know, I think I look better now, right? All right. Uh, 
We use the balls. Uh, what else can you show me? Something a little more strenuous. Uh, okay, to... well, we have this new idea that um, not only can you work your arms and your upper body when you do push-ups, but you can also work your trunk, your midsection and your back. So you want to uh -huh. see how to do that? Push-ups. Push-ups. probably do. Well, okay, but it's beyond a push-up push because... What you need to do is come on to, like, you could do at the top of a push-up. You say you do a whole mm -hmm. series of just push-ups. Push-ups. Okay, then you stay at the top. Okay. Keep your fingers facing front. Your elbows are going to face back. Now curl your toes and straighten your knees. Uh -huh. Now pull your abdominals in and look, <gasps> look forward. Uh -huh. Okay, now bring your chest reaching in the opposite direction of your heels. Now bend your elbows and keep your back oh. in that position as you lower down. Uh -huh. Down, down, down. And down. Uh -huh. Very good. Yeah, all right. All <laughs> okay, right, then so one of you those. probably have to bend your knees. Okay. Push up. And push up. Oh, of... okay. Good, yeah. So a bunch those of push ups. Those are so easy, Karen. <laughs> and, uh... You want something harder? <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, we'll do those at the next break. We don't want to do too much too fast. We have, we have viewers watching who are, you know, who are drinking as they. So you come up here. Okay. Pull your stomach in. Okay, now uh -huh. you form a plank position with your body uh -huh. and keep your body perfectly straight. Let's try to look forward. Going down, 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 down. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> one more time, please. No, no, one more time. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Barbarian on TNT. Lots of trekking in this movie. Trekking across the desert. And that was Max von Sydow as King Osric, being his usual, usual long-winded self. You know, every movie Max von Sydow is in, he has a scene where the action comes to a halt so he can speechify. Struggling actors are probably in classes all over the country going, this is the monologue from The Ultimate Warrior where Max von Sydow asked Yul Brynner to join his commune. Or I will now do the speech from Needful Things where Max von Sydow admits to being the devil. <laughs> you know all those speeches he does? Yeah. All right, by the way, Karen, Karen Voigt, our celebrity guest here tonight. Who are your biggest celebrity clients? Mm, Tina Turner. Oh. Bette Midler. Oh. Di Diane Carroll. I worked with Elle McPherson. She's great. Wow, and all, <laughs> all four of those are in great shape. Paul Abdul. I've worked with um, James, he's my favorite, James Taylor. Really? He's your favorite celebrity yeah. client of all your celebrity right. clients. All right. Our bodybuilding 304 guest lecturer, Karen Voigt, is now going to have me do something truly challenging. All right? Karen, <laughs> challenge me. Okay. We're going to do like a, we're going to start with the squat that's sort of the same as the squat, but it's harder because you start with your arms and you bend uh -huh. your knees and bend your elbows. Then come down into the squat position. Uh, okay. Then you shoot your arms up, uh -huh. keep your chest lifted, and push down with your arms as you squeeze your legs up. So lower your... <laughs> Karen, this isn't hard. <laughs> Try Do deeper with your heels on the floor. Okay. Okay, now bend deeper. Uh -huh. Shoot your arms up. Go lower. <laughs> now stand up. Put your hands down as you straighten your legs up. Now do 25 of them. <laughs> uh, <Bend>. Okay. <laughs> Then push, squeeze. Then push, squeeze. <laughs> okay. With fluidity. Challenge me some more. <laughs> um, another one would be one-legged squat. How about that? Okay. Uh, put all your weight on your left leg. Okay. okay. Just point your right toe. Bend your knees and bend your elbows here. Okay, now when you come up, raise the leg off the floor. <laughs> Down. Not bad. That's pretty good. Down. It's kind of a ballet <laughs> move, isn't it? Yeah. Like a... Down. The Bolshoi well, <laughs> does this every morning. Up, down. Those are hard. You feel it there in the yeah. butt, right? Uh -huh. Up, yeah. down. Okay. Up. Another what one would be, this is really more. balletic. You step forward, lift the back leg up, and then step back, touch your heel. Step forward, lift, step back, heel. <laughs> step kind of forward, the... lift, step back, heel. <laughs> kind of... I'm not getting step the hang of this. Step forward, lift. So you oh. kind of step out. Lift. <laughs> it's the Martha Graham. <laughs> step back, up, step back here, and okay. then touch your heel. And step oh. forward, step forward, lift. Whoa, step back. Step forward, lift. Okay, now lift your leg higher. Let's get back to Onan, okay? <laughs> do you make Tina Turner do these? Mm hmm She's good at these. I don't see Tina doing that move on stage. <laughs> 
First, there was my TNT Monster Vision website with the famous caption contest, which is still going strong, I might add. Then we added the incredibly sexy Monster Vision t-shirt, coveted by would-be prize winners everywhere. Then we added the Find That Flick contest, in which you can win all kinds of free junk just by knowing the plots of weird movies. And now we proudly present Joe Bob's Summer School website, which is the perfect companion to my summer-long movie lineup on TNT. Well, not the perfect companion. Jennifer Lopez would be the perfect companion. But my point is, I'm slowly building an empire here at TNT. It's no longer possible to take me lightly. And I'll take just as much time as I want with this promo. OK, to find out your class assignments and guest lecturers, get on the information superhighway and drive to tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. And Enroll at Joe Bob's Summer School now at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Barbarian on TNT. Who will not face emptiness? That's the big catchphrase of evangelist James Earl Jones. He's got them lined up because it's such an attractive philosophy. Come to emptiness. This is CNN. <laughs> he has that voice. Is my watch broken, or was that one of the shortest segments in the history of television? And uh, by the way, nice wig on James Earl Jones, huh? They were going for that little Susie gives her Barbie a haircut look, weren't they? <laughs> Workout pro Karen Voigt is still here with us. So, Karen, I think my, my muscles are a little fatigued from that last one we did. So maybe we can bring somebody else in here to do the next exercise. I see... Well, it's Rusty and Cheryl hanging out in the hall, without a hall pass, no doubt. But girls, come on in here and do Karen's exercises, okay? Maybe y'all can show us show us some yoga or something while I... Okay. I'm just going to sit over here and enjoy my <laughs> um, protein drink. We're going to start... Uh, we're going to start with your feet like in a T position. So one leg's turned out. You can get wide and then open your arms out to the side. Shoulders down. Reach through the fingertips and just bend your knee. Now you try to keep your front heel pressing back and then press down on your elbow and reach up with the top arm. And then if you can, you reach the top arm over your ear and turn your chin, look up to the ceiling. Okay, now keep your legs exactly as they are. And then on an inhale, you just bring your body up and your arms out, just like they were before, but keep your front leg bent. So by now, that front leg is burning. <laughs> then you stand up. And then you slide your bottom ribs out as far as you can. Place your hand on the ankle or on the shin. Take the other arm up to the ceiling. Rotate the shoulder. And then sweep the arm by the ear. And reach out through the fingertips. I had no idea yoga was this interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, from where I'm sitting, and then the exercise the I like. Arm moves down. I saw yoga, the San Francisco part. thing. Or something. Arms back up. <laughs> okay, we're going to get back to a confusing but muscle-filled Conan the Barbarian movie. Go. Can I join whatever gym you gals work out at? Because, of course, gyms have rules now that are designed specifically to keep guys like me out. <laughs> U.S. Air Force Captain Rusty. And our training films are the hilarious Charlie Sheen spoof Hot Shots, followed by Lou Gossett Jr. in Aces, Iron Eagle 3, movies that are not authorized by the Air Force, by the by. Well, it's time for our second feature starring Arnold the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, and uh, we'll be ogling more muscles to earn that one bodybuilding 304 credit tonight, including those of Grace Jones and Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain, Arnold's co-stars in Conan the Destroyer. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but suffice it to say that Conan the Destroyer is at least twice as good as Conan the Barbarian, because you know how in the first one Arnold says about 20 words in the whole flick because he's trying to communicate with Sandal Bergman? Well, in this one, Arnold only says about three words because Sandal is dead, right? She's one dead pork chop. So we're talking more thwacks and less facts, more pecs and less sex. Arnold, the only actor in history who has muscles on the outside of his skin, gets blood on his deltoids in almost every scene of this movie. So anyway, let's take a look at the drive-in totals and then get back to it. We have 52 dead bodies, two breaths, both of them on Conan, nine gallons of human blood, one gallon green lizard blood, three beasts, two heads roll, one ear-to-ear -ear throat slitting, excellent kung fu, four stars. Check it out. Go. Sometimes flicks like this aren't logical, though. And it bugs me, because they want us to think that Wilt Chamberlain is going to kill Conan the Barbarian. Everybody knows that Wilt couldn't even play defense on Bill Russell. Right? And if you're watching Wilt, please don't beat me up, because 
Don't make me get nasty, because I'll get all your girlfriends in the same room at the same time. We'll get really vicious on you, Wilt, because Wilt is a guy who claims he slept with 20,000 women, you know? I was going to try to break his record, but have you seen the prices lately? Ooh. First, there was my TNT Monster Vision website with the famous caption contest, which is still going strong, I might add. Then we added the incredibly sexy Monster Vision t-shirt, coveted by would-be prize winners everywhere. Then we added the Find That Flick contest, in which you can win all kinds of free junk just by knowing the plots of weird movies. And now we proudly present Joe Bob's Summer School website, which is the perfect companion to my summer-long movie lineup on TNT. Well, not the perfect companion. Jennifer Lopez would be the perfect companion. But my point is, I'm slowly building an empire here at TNT. It's no longer possible to take me lightly. And I'll take just as much time as I want with this promo. OK, to find out your class assignments and guest lecturers, get on the information superhighway and drive to tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. And Enroll at Joe Bob Summer School now at tnt.turner.com forward slash summer school. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. See, it's already better than the first one, isn't it? It's faster, it's more interesting, it's got better characters. Arnold is still going around slugging horses and camels like in the first movie. Although, come to think of it, that's a direct steal from Blazing Saddles, isn't it? <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain wearing the world's worst wig and 9,000 pounds of wet mastodon fur is still pretty decent in his film debut. This was his film debut. And they hired the veteran Richard Fleischer to direct. John Milius directed the first one. It was not his kind of thing. As you probably noticed, it was slow and plodding even though it ended up making a hundred million bucks and making the second one possible. But Richard Fleischer, who he must be in his 80s by now because he was doing theater in New York back in the 30s. But Richard was kind of known as the master of the big budget adventure film, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Fantastic Voyage and Tora, Tora, Tora. And one of our favorites around here, Soylent Green. Actually, he was originally one of those film noir guys back in the 50s, you know, the guys who did the gritty black and white realism films. My, my two favorite Richard Fleischer flicks are The New Centurions, remember that one? And Mandingo. <laughs> and I won't even mention the immortal Amityville 3D. That was a good one, too. Anyway, Richard Fleischer knew exactly what to do with the Conan story, which was to surround Conan with interesting characters and limit his dialogue to three words per sequence, basically turn him into a fighting machine. And he also knew it wouldn't hurt to dress up the 14-year-old Olivia Dabo in a nightie with a great bodice on it. Whoa! How'd they get away with that, you know? Put that picture on the Internet and the FBI child porno squad comes knocking on your door. Whoa! Go! Roll it. Richard Fleischer, he's good. Richard Fleischer and Arnold, they probably reminisced about their Austrian heritage while making the film, because Arnold had just become an American citizen in 1983 after he grew up in Graz, Austria. And uh, Richard was born in Brooklyn, but his dad was from Vienna. His dad was Max Fleischer of the Dave and Max Fleischer animation team, creators of Popeye and Betty Boop. So it's in his genes, those wacky Austrians. Want to win a free video of some obscure horror movie you've never heard of that some guy in West Virginia made in his basement? Of course you do. That's why umpteen jillion people have discovered our Find That Flick contest. If you've never heard of it, forget it. It's too complicated to explain on TV. But you can find out all about it on our Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. And I'll give you one clue. If you're one of those guys who never leaves his apartment except to rent videos, this contest was designed to give heretofore unrealized meaning to your life. Play the Find That Flick contest at tnt.turner.com forward slash monster vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. Isn't Grace Jones great? <laughs> Grace Jones with a burr haircut, jousting and headbutting with Wilt Chamberlain, whose hair is nine feet long. How good is that? She kind of steals the movie with that wild woman act, you know? The way, she, the way she got involved in this is that she knew the producer, Dino De Laurentiis. Actually, his daughter, Raffaella De Laurentiis, is the producer of this movie. But she knew him from the 70s when she was doing weird, low-budget movies over in Europe. The last movie she made before Conan the Destroyer was Army of Lovers or Revolt of the Perverts. A German flick made in 1978. Can, can we get that for the show? Because I want, I want to see that. Revolt of the Perverts. It's in German, though, so maybe I don't. Okay. Back to the movie. 
I have nothing against Germans, but they always have these black and white flashback scenes, you know, where a mime dances on a clown's head with an umbrella in his hand and then slits his throat. You know what I'm talking about? You guys need to get out and see these things, these German, the flashback mime sequence, that's what they call it. They teach it in German film school. Sometimes the flashback sequence has Santa Claus dressed in drag, butchering a pig or something, but they're all artistes over there in Germany. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. Hey, what was that? God, they're doing it again. That was about a two-minute segment. Don't you guys have any respect for the hard-working students of Joe Bob Summer School here? The wizard stole Olivia Dabo, and she's going to be the first to do something in a 1,000 years, so we want to find out what that is, OK? Good grief. OK. Back to the movie. I think I represent the typical TNT viewer when I say that you should just charge more for the commercials and have less of them, right? You agree? Well, there's going to be a memo Monday morning, dear Mr. Briggs, and it's, it's going to be signed Vice President Sales and Marketing, and I'm going to be rattling a paper cup in front of Bloomingdale's, but that's OK, because it felt good for about 20 seconds there. So no regrets, right? Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. What happened to Grace Jones? There's very little Grace Jones during this part. OK, I think it might be helpful at this point to sum up the entire plot of the movie thus far. Starts out with Arnold the Barbarian hacking off nine or 10 body parts with his 1,000-pound Wilkinson sword machete. And then he decks a horse with a roundhouse right like Alex Karras in Blazing Saddles. And then this British bitch queen comes up and tells Arnold to stop messing around with her guards and go bring back the precious jewel from the sorcerer's palace, because otherwise there's no movie. So uh, Arnold says what's in it for him, and the royal bitch uh, says if Arnold will take her virgin daughter to the jewel, then she'll bring Sandal Bergman back to life. And Arnold says, really? And then a camel vomits on Arnold, and Arnold has to deck him. And then uh, Conan gets the virgin. He starts off for the Magic Palace with his sidekick, a weenie named Mailox or something, who looks like Gene Hackman's midget brother. But at the last minute, the bitch queen decides to send Wilt Chamberlain along for the ride. So Wilt puts on a spiked helmet with horns, and the queen tells him as soon as they get the jewel to kill Conan. And then they go riding off through the desert until they find these white-faced zombies roasting a Chinese guy on a spit. And Arnold hacks off a few heads and cuts the Chinese guy loose and tells the guy he needs him for his journey and the Chinese guy wears a beanie and mutters a lot and then they go to a town where Grace Jones has her leg chained up and she's fighting off six guys with a spear and the virgin princess sees what's going on and by the way Olivia Dabo looks like she got lost on her way to the Celine Dion concert don't you think <laughs> And uh, anyway, Olivia thinks uh, it's not fair. There's six guys against one girl in chains. So Arnold goes over and cuts Grace Jones loose from the chain. And Grace takes a big stick and starts polling people in their privates. And then Grace decides to join the big party on the way to the palace. And then there's a bunch of plot where they go to the palace and get the jewel and kill the one-eyed magician with gold fingers. And Arnold has to wrestle a giant gorilla man in a red cape who comes out of a mirror house. And then the palace falls to pieces and they get away. And then Wilt starts acting funny and they get ambushed by some Vikings and they get all banged up and Wilt tries to kill Conan but he has a good explanation so Conan is too stupid to believe that Wilt is trying to kill him and that's about it right does that sum it up okay back to the movie because people go to the bathroom see they miss stuff I did that as a consumer service they don't do that on TBS you know what they do over there I don't, I don't even think they watch the movie at TBS I can't prove it but it's not about the movie over there. It's about personal greed and ambition. That's what it's about. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just my own personal opinion. They don't make more money than us, do they? And we beat them in the ratings, right? <laughs> we do. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. Wow, a short segment and a lame segment. <laughs> Olivia Dabo learns how to fight and then ask what sex is. Of course, since 1984, she's learned what sex is, hadn't she? <laughs> In movies like Greedy and The Last Good Time and Live Nude Girls, this was her first movie ever after training with the London Royal Ballet Theater. And then she went on to her most famous role as the hippie older sister Karen Arnold 
on the Wonder Years. Year 1984 was also the year that Arnold Schwarzenegger became a superstar because this movie came out and then right after this came The Terminator. Because up till then, he struggled a little, um, well, a little bit, not as much as the normal person when I say he struggled, but he, he'd struggled as a movie actor. For those of you who don't know by now, Arnold grew up in Graz, Austria, the son of the police chief of Graz, who was a stern man. He was a former member of the Nazi party. So at the age of 15, Arnold rebelled against his dad because his dad wanted him to be a professional soccer player, but Arnold wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. And then he moved to the United States in 1968, and he went to the University of Wisconsin, and he majored in business and economics, and his bodybuilding career just took off. He was billed as the Austrian Oak, and he won Mr. World, Mr. Universe five times, and Mr. Olympia seven times. And ironically, he's so rich today that he owns both the Mr. Universe and the Mr. Olympia pageants. So anyway, he retired undefeated in 1980, and during all those years, he was trying to get into the movies. Now. He made uh, Hercules in New York in 1970 under the name Arnold Strong, but it was so bad it was never released until 1983 and they dubbed his voice. But then he was in Bob Rafelson's uh, Stay Hungry as a bodybuilder and he first really came to prominence in Pumping Iron in 1977, one of the greatest documentaries ever made. Love that movie, but uh, he really didn't meet, need the money by that time because he had invested all his bodybuilding winnings and the revenues he got from his mail order real estate business and he was already a millionaire by the time he became an American citizen in 1983 and then he married Maria Shriver and up until 1993 he held the distinction of being the only major movie star who had never had a flop unfortunately 1993 is the year he released the last action hero so still a pretty remarkable story okay let's get back to the picture that's still his only flop, right? Well, Junior. May Junior. But, the, you know, that one and Junior. Well, it's Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Hey, the man's 52 years old. He's eventually going to screw up, okay? Rusty the Mail Girl here, inviting you to visit our Monster Vision website. This is the place to get the scoop on zombies, ghouls, road warriors, or whatever happens to be the late-breaking story on this week's show. Check out our Playmate of the Week, or try your luck at the Monster Vision Caption Contest and win a free T-shirt. Or visit Joe Bob's Mailbag page where you can see your favorite fan mail of the week. To find us on the Internet, go to tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. I'll be waiting. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. Way too much plot getting in the way of the story here. We got jewels, we got magic horns, we got wizards, we got curses and prophecies. You know, if you uh, read the original Conan books, the stories are kind of simple. It's too bad, but even in the best Conan movies, they don't really achieve what the books did. Because Robert E. Howard wrote 12 Conan novels back in the 30s, and uh, Robert was a Texas good old boy, lived out in Cross Plains, Texas, in the area of West Texas we call the Cross Timbers, middle of gall dang nowhere is where that is, <laughs> land of the scrub oak and the mesquite, and he never traveled farther than Fort Worth his whole life. He would go to Fort Worth for boxing matches, but that was the only traveling he ever did. And he liked guns, and he liked writing stories, and he hated snakes, which when you live in West Texas, you deal with rattlesnakes all the time. You notice how there's always a deadly snake scene in every Conan story? So anyway, Robert E. Howard never made much money, never got married, just lived with his mother in a little frame house, and he sent stories off to the pulp magazines in New York. He wrote detective stories, wrote poetry, wrote Western stories, but the most original thing he created were these barbarian stories. And then in 1936, his mother died, and he just couldn't deal with it. So he typed a few lines on his typewriter, and he got out his pistol, and he went out to the car, and he committed suicide. And they buried him next to his mother, and he was 30 years old. And when the local newspaper reporter went uh, in the house, he found a sheet of paper that was still there in the typewriter and he pulled it out because it was Robert E. Howard's last words. And it was a poem and it said, All fled, all done, so lift me on the pyre. The feast is over, the lamps expire. Okay, back to the movie. What? <laughs> they love it when I tell gloomy stories. You like that, didn't you? You know? You know, you can go to the main cemetery there in, in uh, Brownwood and see Robert E. Howard's grave. And uh, when he was alive, nobody really even knew he was a writer. 
you know, nobody paying attention to it. Now they have Robert E. Howard festivals out there in Brownwood and Cross Plains. You ever been to Cross Plains? Anybody ever been to Cross Plains? Whoa. You take the worst desert they show in this movie, it's worse. Not a very pretty part of Texas. Looks like a giant fell on it and mashed all the trees down into mush. <laughs> Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. That wily Wilt Chamberlain, you knew he was going to steal the girl, didn't you? Okay, time for the big special effects jamboree conclusion to Conan the Destroyer, where Conan finally squares off against Dagoth, the monster created by Carlo Rambaldi, creator of E.T. You know the only thing I don't like about this picture? Wilt is great. Grace Jones, great. Mako is great as Akiro the Wizard. Olivia Dabo, she's okay as the 14-year-old virgin princess. But it's the comic relief sidekick. You know, Tracy Walter is okay as an actor, but I just don't think we need that guy. One too many characters in the movie, but then that's just my opinion. All right, roll it. Wilt Chamberlain, captain of the greatest team in NBA history, the 1966-67 Philadelphia 76ers. Am I right? Chet Walker, Hal Greer, Billy Cunningham, Luke Jackson, Wally Jones, Matt Gukas. You know why it was greater than modern teams? Better than the Bulls? Slam dunking was illegal. And you know why slam dunking was illegal? Because they actually made up rules to penalize Wilt Chamberlain. They widened the lane because of Wilt. They invented offensive goaltending because of Wilt. They changed the free throw rules because of Wilt. You know, Wilt had one year where he averaged 50.4 points a game. You know how many times he scored 50 points or more in a single game? 118 times. You know how many times he scored 60 points or more? 32 times. 30,000 points in Wilt's career. You know, they said he was a womanizer, you know? But I think he worked harder than he womanized. Because, you know, the estimates were only 20,000 women. So look at your figures, 30,000 points. <laughs> 20,000 women. Work was a priority with this guy. Back to Joe Bob Summer School and Conan the Destroyer on TNT. So Conan passes up the 14-year-old jailbait virgin queen in order to go his lonely barbarian way. Although I guess in barbarian times there was no such thing as jailbait, right? So let's just not go down that road, okay? <laughs> Conan the Destroyer, the film deemed unsuitable by the Dallas Motion Picture Classification Board, even though it got a PG from the MPAA. Universal had to go to court to get it released as a PG in Dallas, Texas. Okay, I want to thank our special guest lecturer, Karen Voigt, for helping us out tonight. And I want to remind you that next week's summer school class is on Applied Aeronautics from World War II to five minutes ago. And our guest will be former Air Force pilot, Rusty, the TNT mail girl, and we'll be at March Air Force Base on a field trip to do that show. And uh, I'd like to be her co-pilot, if you know what I mean, and I think you do. And we'll be watching the wacky Air Force comedy Hot Shots and the third in the Lou Gossett action flick series, Aces, Iron Eagle 3. And that's it for me, Professor Joe Bob, reminding you here on Bodybuilding Night that inside every fat person is a thin person struggling to get out. But they can usually be sedated with a few pieces of chocolate cake. <laughs> You guys hear the one about Hercules, Sleeping Beauty, and Quasimodo? Well, they were talking one day, and Hercules says, I reckon I'm the strongest person in the world. And Sleeping Beauty says, well, I reckon I'm the most beautiful person in the world. And Quasimodo says, well, I reckon I'm the ugliest person in the world. So they go down to the Guinness Book of World Records to have their claims ratified. Hercules goes in, and he comes out first, and he's looking very happy, and he says, it's official, I am the strongest person in the world. Sleeping Beauty goes in, and she comes out next. She's looking ecstatic, and she says, and I am officially the most beautiful person in the world. Quasimodo goes in, he comes out, and he's completely crestfallen. And he says, who the hell is Linda Tripp? <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. <laughs> Big movie producer, big movie producer is talking about his new project, an action picture about famous composers. And he's going to have several top stars in this movie. So he's going to use Sylvester Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
So the studio wants the box office power of all three of them, so, so they tell them they can pick whichever composer they want to play. So Sylvester Stallone st says, uh, well, I've always liked Mozart. I'd love to play him. And uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme says, uh, Chopin has always been my favorite. I'll play him. And the producer is really happy, and he says, sounds great, but who do you want to be, Arnold? And Arnold says, I'll be Bach. <laughs>